chance to do that. It's still available or whatever platform you're watching this. And if that platform, for whatever reason, doesn't work, which we always have a backup, for the backup, for the backup. That's the way I was taught by my teacher. Always have a backup and a backup for that backup and a backup for that backup. <laughs> all right. So before we start, let's ask for blessing to the Divine Supreme One, Divine Father and Mother, to all the spiritual elders, holy masters, saints, archangels, holy angels, and spiritual helpers. Personally, to my teacher, Master Tsuha Hoksui, Mahaguji Meiling, we thank you for divine light, love, guidance, help, healing, and divine protection. Thank you for your compassionate, purifying light and soothing healing energy. We thank you in full faith. And so it is. All right. As you know, Fridays we've designated for healing, either emotional healing or prosperity healing, and we just kind of, you know, flip it. Either morning is prosperity healing, evening is emotional healing, and vice versa. All right. So one of the things that um, I noticed a lot of people have been asking is healing fear. Now, before we do that, again, I've said this so many times, you have to put everything in context. You know, you always hear people, oh, no fear. Uh, hello, Jumping off a plane that is <laughs> you're flying on a commercial jet, then you go, oh, I have no fear. Let me open the door and jump out. Okay, unless it's a planned thing, that might not be too smart. The, that kind of fear is important. Okay, same thing. If you know you have a, you go into the zoo, and <laughs> there's lions, then you go, hey, I just want to show I have no fear. You jump, you might get dead. <laughs> I know my kids used to say, oh, don't get dead. I said, don't die. My point, a lot of people, they, they're so spaced out, they go, oh yeah, no fear. You have to put it in context. You have a certain objective, you have a certain goal to make this much money or to, you have to, you have to sing in front of a big audience or whatever. You say, okay, I have no fear. Then that's proper context. To just flat out, I have no fear about everything, that's dumb. You're going to get yourself killed. Okay? You know, let's say you're, you're, Buses going by, cars going by. Oh, no fear. I'm going to walk through. Cars will stop. If I'm, <laughs> here's the best one. If I'm karmically, you know, or the destiny is I'm not supposed to die, then I won't. <sighs> a bunch of dumbasses. I mean, I've seen people talk like that. I'm going, no wonder your life is a mess. <laughs> you know, everything is in context. Fear is important because it is part of your survival instinct. What they're talking about, when you take these uh, classes with Tony Robbins or you're you know, with a motivational speaker, is what they're saying is like courage. People who have courage does not mean they don't have fear. They have fear, but they overcome it and then keep moving forward. That's intelligent courage. Make sense? I just want to point it out there because... Uh, I cannot tell you how people don't put things in context and start quoting things left and right. I'm going, mm -hmm. God gave you a brain to think, to analyze, and then make the right choices. Okay? So, people say, oh, I live with no fear. Okay, I'm assuming you that's intelligent type, right? Like, you're not going to jump in front of a bus uh, because you have no fear. All right? Good. So, here's the thing. Assuming that it's the type of fear that paralyzes you, that prevents you from being successful, those type of fear energies are basically thought forms. And if you took the psychic self-defense class with us a few weeks ago, you have to put this in context. When you say a thought form, it's not just actually a thought, but it's a combination of different types of raw material. It involves th uh, thoughts, it involves certain feelings, and certain <clears throat> etheric material from your aura. So when a person is feeling happy, oh, I'm so happy I have this, I have that, or I'm so happy because I have, someone loves me, or whatever it is. That thought form you create is a combination of mental energy, emotional energy, etheric energy, and maybe other frequencies in your aura. But we just use a simplified term, thought form, okay? So fear is the same thing. When a person has a lot of fear energies, they have a lot of fear thought forms, it's also a combination of certain mental uh, material, emotional material, etheric material, and other parts of the aura, uh, other parts, from other parts of the aura. And it's interesting that these things have a tendency to be stuck in certain chakras, uh, depending on what type of fear it is. Now, in general, and I would recommend that um, you either attend the pranic psychotherapy class if it's available in your area, if it's already opened up, uh, nobody's teaching it online yet. But in the meantime, you can at least get the book, Pranic Psychotherapy. And the way my teacher explained it, it's like this. 
two things. One, the condition of your chakras affect your behavior. So, for example, if the heart chakra is very, very big, it's easier to be loving. And when a person is very loving, the heart chakra expands. Make sense? Now, in the case of fear, when a person has just general fear, these fear thought forms are in the crown, the ajna, front, back, soul plexus, and it has to do with money, it's in your basic chakra. So, in other words, these chakras affect the way you think and the way you feel. So, if there are these fear thought forms inside, then right there and then, it triggers certain fears, whether it's justified or not. So you want to be successful. Let's say there's a business venture you want to go into. But five years ago, for whatever reason, you had a negative experience. And so that fear thought form is in these chakras I mentioned. So as you look at this business opportunity, even though you did your due diligence, everything looks right, you have the right people, right? I mean, all ducks, all your ducks are in the same row. Does that say? I don't know if I said it right. Yet somehow... You're afraid to move forward. There's that fear. So if you think about it, it's irrational fear, but it's just because of that negative experience in the past. So those thought forms, when removed, you'll go, what am I waiting for? Let's do it. Make sense? So that's the healthy way of using these teachings. Here's another one. Let's say you had a bad relationship that happened, I don't know, how many years ago. And instead of sitting there and blaming whatever, you just... In the end, it's just you ended it or they ended it and it kind of left a negative, uh, or what, what they say is like bad taste in your mouth. So moving forward, even though, again, all the conditions are right, you did your due diligence, <laughs> if you know what I mean, like, okay, this person, you have your likes, your, you have similar uh, likes in your life, you have the same goal, you know, it feels like everything's lined up, it's good, but you're afraid to commit. Because that fear from that negative experience is holding you back. So you go, oh, okay. So everything looks right. I, I thought it through. You know, everything's right. It's just this part of me that cannot let go because of a fear in the past. Then, you know, you've isolated. It's a thought form located in those chakras. Okay. So you go to pranic psychotherapy or the meditation we do tonight with a little bit of, a, you know, excavating. Get rid of it. Okay. You move forward. See what I mean? So you're using, you're, in, in, uh, you're introducing the energetic aspect so that as you energetically remove it, it changes the way you think and the way you feel so you can move forward. Make sense? So this can happen with anything, even your spiritual practice. Same thing. You, you're doing meditation and you saw something scary and then because of that, you stop meditating. Well, it could be, number one, it could be something that a thought form that you carried into your meditation that was not flushed out, or it could be a terrible lunch you had. <laughs> it could be you were meditating in an unclean environment, so some of the thought forms, it could be anything. But you say, okay, let's isolate this. Let me go to the healing. Let me remove those thought forms of fear, and let's see what happens. And lo and behold, because of you flush those thought forms, you start to meditate, it's not there anymore. Make sense? So the idea here is, Fear, like every thought, every emotion we have, essentially a certain type of energy. Just energy. Now, let's take it one step further. If you have children or a loved one, and uh, they're perfectly fine, but they have so much fear, so they have nightmares, what do you do? So you go to a counselor, they talk to you about it, maybe it's something in your subconscious and all that, so you went through all that, it's still there. Well, guess what? It could be just thought forms in certain parts of the aura, so when their body's sleeping, the, the soul is in the emotional world. We talked about this before. I don't want to go through the entire thing. So the soul is now in the emotional world, roaming around. But you see, you're now in the world of emotions, the astral plane. So if that, if that fear or that negative emotion in your waking moment was due to a horror movie you saw or a negative experience, you have a tendency to carry that in your dream state. So there in the dream state, which is also the emotional state, everything is magnified. And so it become more intense, right? So this happened to your children, to your loved one, so they're having nightmares. What do you do? Now, after going to counseling, everything, you notice nothing has helped, or maybe it helped, you go, but there's something we can do. So if they do meditation to in the hearts, or they go to what we're going to do today, in addition to letting that divine energy come down, 
We're going to use pranic psychotherapy, use that energy to go into the chakras and pull all these fear energies out. I'm, I cannot tell you the countless people that have been helped with their nightmares, especially children, just using pranic psychotherapy, using energy to remove those fear energies. Because when all is said and done, any emotion is just energy. Make sense? So I hope you understand it from that viewpoint. You see, people, again, forget or do not know that every thought, every emotion we have, good or bad, positive or negative, are fabrications of the soul. It's something you create. It's like this, the soul is like the computer user. The computer is either the physical body to create movement. The computer could be the, another computer could be the emotional body or the astral body to what? Create feelings or emotions. And you have another computer called the mental body that you create thoughts. So all these feelings, all these different things that we've done physically, emotionally, mentally, all of them are fabrications of the I. I know you're probably so tired of hearing me saying this, but that is the most important to, to know because whatever happened in the past are fabrications of the soul based on the experience and their circumstances then. That's why your past does not define your future. So if there's certain things you're fearful before, certain things that didn't work out well, nobody says you have to create the same program for the future. But if that was not good, why you create it again? Because people don't know. They thought the program that they created before has to continue playing. When in reality, if that's a bad program, bad algorithm, in putting computer terms, why would you keep playing it? If you know, right? If it's something physically in front of you, you go, hey, that program is bad. Stop. What's the next obvious thing to do? Delete. And what's the next thing to do? Let me put a new program in. Isn't it? That's what you would do. Or unplug everything. You would not say, yeah, you know, that program is terrible. It's actually got a virus and it's ruining everything in the computer. But it is what it is. Nobody in their right mind would do that. Right? So why would the past have to define your future? Stop the program, delete the old program, plant the new one. Because you are the computer user. You're the one that created this data of physical movement, emotions, and thoughts. Did you get that yet? I mean, the ones who got it, I know some of you are new, go, what the heck is he talking about? But some of you or hopefully a lot of you who really got this deeply go, do you realize how empowering that is? Like, are you telling me that whatever crap I created before, I don't have to create again? And I actually, actually create what I want? Yeah. Are, are the crickets like... You get the point? That is the power of knowing who you are who you really are. Nobody ever said the old programming has to continue. I know some of you are so tired of hearing it. I've been saying this for who knows how long. And some of you have taken class with me 10 years ago. I'm still saying the same thing. I just watched some of the old videos we posted. It's saying the same darn thing. I'm going, man, good thing I didn't listen to it. I'll be tired of myself. But that's the bottom line. That's what spirituality is. You are spirit having an earthly experience. And this spirit, I just, I'm using that loosely, spirit or the soul, the spiritual self, is creating data in the physical world, in the emotional and mental world, as you interact with the world, which is what you call your earthly life. To just have that realization that I created this, if it's good, let's keep doing it. If it's not, get rid of it. You don't need a PhD to figure that part out. If something doesn't work, stop using it. Stop doing it. Yeah, but you don't understand. It was a really traumatic experience. The more you have to get rid of it, because if that's it was that traumatic, that negative program is so pervasive, affects every part of your life, why keep replaying it? Yeah, but I can't help it. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Why can't you? 
well, but you don't understand. This is my genetics. Hello? How many people do you know that were born in terrible conditions or have certain physical weaknesses or whatever genetic issues, and yet they've been able to make their life super successful and make a huge difference? And how many people do you know were born with perfect, almost perfect lives, you know, have good upbringing and everything, and they totally screwed it up? Just look at some of these celebrities that have everything. I mean, they became, they rose to fame, successful. Their parents were like famous actors, actors, directors, and they were dying out of drug overdose. And yet you see people who have everything that not right happened to them. Bad relationship, health issues, and so on, so on, so on. But somehow they being able to change their lives and make it better. And take it one step further, make the lives of other people better. It's choices the soul makes. So stop giving excuses. Yeah, but you don't understand. Yeah, exactly. I don't get it. Why would people continue doing it when they actually, by just realizing who they are, go, okay, stop, delete, program new one, move forward. Do you need to read like 20,000 books to figure that apart? Or it's just common sense? Apparently, common sense is not so common. You know why? Because the majority of the people are spiritually asleep. Spiritually asleep. They're asleep to who they are. All the creations of the thoughts, of the soul, the thoughts, the emotions, and the movements of the body, the habits, are running their life. So the soul is asleep. And just let everything run. That's why the Lord Buddha said, I am awake. Don't call me God. I am awake. Awake to what? Awake to who I am. That's it. When all is said and done, <clears throat> that's the most important thing. That's why the funny part is I've had the opportunity to work, to heal, work on people who are billionaires. You know what a B? And for some of you who don't know, a billion... <laughs> It's a thousand millions. And I remember I was working on this billionaire. I was looking at, hmm, he wears his pants the same way. He breathes air. He looks like the same guy. Regular person. And then the funny part is, he was asking me, you know, he flew me up to Northern California to do a healing session. I'm thinking, man, this guy must have, you know, 28 severe elements that nobody can help. Why would he fly me up there, pay me a, a big sum of money to show up? And I'm going, man, this is going to be a difficult case. When I have him fill out the healing form, he said two words, emotional lassitude. I'm going, what the heck is that? I know Lassie the dog. I mean, what is lassitude? I go, uh, excuse me, what do, you, what do you mean by this? We're, we're sitting in this big old backyard with a pool and, you know, the guy's a billionaire, right? It's like, what do you need? What do you need? What is this? Maybe my English is not that good, but what the heck is emotional? I know emotional. What's lassitude? I'm not a bad person in life. I'm not happy. I'm going, I'm looking around. He's got anything and everything materially. He looks like I have a happy family. He's got, doesn't look like, I asked him, he doesn't have any ailments. Go, what the heck is that? So I just decided to be nice and not be so direct because I don't want to offend this billionaire. <laughs> so, so, excuse me, uh, so... Could you tell me a little bit of um, the times that you do not feel this emotional woof woof no yeah, lassitude? <laughs> he goes, yeah, well, you know, when there's someone who needs something, and I found someone who has it, when I put them together, I feel fulfillment. I'm going, ah, you and I both know that's called service, <laughs> right? He's a venture capitalist. But he could not put it in spiritual terms like, when somebody's in need, I found somebody to help them, and they got help, I'm a happy dude. It's service. The soul needs to serve and to give. He has everything. He doesn't have any negative thoughts about money or anything else, but he's missing something. Because the soul, the spiritual self, when awake, or glimpses of that awakeness, knows that we're all interconnected. To see someone suffer and not lift a finger, you might say, oh, I don't care, as long as I'm okay, it will bother you. You might not admit it. You might say, oh, yeah, but as long as I'm fine, but part of you will get bothered. 
that's why I want to thank a lot of you, almost all of you, that when we um, reach out to a lot of you and suggest that you give to the different charities, to India, to Philippines, to different parts that were affected by the pandemic or wars and everything, a lot of you responded. And I thank you and I ask you to please continue. Just go to masterco.org. There's a donation there that there are all the different charities. You can pick whoever you like. Again, I don't get a commission out of it. I don't get a referral fee or a whatever affiliate fee. It's not YouTube, <laughs> okay? It's just basically to give you an opportunity to give because that's part of the nature of the soul. You experience oneness with God, oneness with all. These people are suffering across the world. You probably will never meet them, but somehow part of you sense their pain and know that I have to do something. It's part of your sense of oneness with all. So thank you and keep going. Because just because it's not in the news doesn't mean that people stop dying. <laughs> okay? I mean, that's, that's the part. We have short attention span. You have news about this, news about that. Things get put in a, you know, the latter pages. You think, oh, okay, I don't see it in the news. Maybe people need to stop dying. No, they still have lines to the crematorium. <laughs> There's still lines. In the Philippines, what I told you guys about that... Um, Philippine General Hospital that, that burned down part of their unit and yeah, they still need money. Parts of Colombia, Venezuela, Middle East, there's still people suffering and we do our meditation, we do our practice and we continue to serve, to give with our resources. So just do it. All right? Now, I know we're kind of detracting a little bit about healing fear. So here's what we're going to do. We'll do a short meditation twin hearts, which is always super, super important. Because when you do meditation twin hearts, as the heart chakra gets opened, it triggers the crown. When the heart and crown gets triggered, you allow yourself to be an instrument to bless the earth. That alone has a cleansing effect. It's a purifying effect. Okay? The only thing we need to add to that is, before we do the meditation, is you state what you want released. And this is so important because people say, well, God knows what I want to let go. Yeah, but also God gave you free will. Free will to keep your crap or get rid of it. So when you say, Oh God, I surrender this anger, this fear, I don't want it anymore. You know what happens? Nothing changed with God. What changed is we stop hiding it inside our aura and our chakras. When you say, Lord God, please clean me, please heal me. Nothing changed up there. It's just like if the room is dark, you open the window, nothing changed with the sun. Do you realize that? Nothing changed with the sun. If your windows are closed, the room is dark, you open the window, light came in, nothing changed with the sun. What Our ability to receive that sunlight? Think about it. The problem has never been God. <laughs> the problem is we're too stupid. We're too proud. This is my crap. I'm going to keep it for the next five lifetimes. That's why. Until we go, okay, I think that's enough. I've suffered enough. Uh, let's go, let go of this. The question is, why do you want to drag it out so long? Why can't we be humble enough and say, okay, I screwed up. Sorry. I'm ready to get rid of it. And you do it during your prayer. You notice before every meditation, we ask for divine blessing. We didn't say you have to pray to who so and so. We don't care who you pray to. There's only one God. But we always do it. Yo, but I'm atheist. It's okay. You can be spiritual and still be atheist. We don't care. Because even if you're atheist, it doesn't change the fact that you're a spiritual being having an earthly experience. So who cares what, who, be, who we live on? Even if you're atheist, it doesn't change the fact that you have a spiritual being, you, are, you have a spiritual essence within you. Now, if you can't accept that, that that part, then sayonara, go somewhere else. Because you're going to be tired of me repeating it over and over and over again. That's why it's funny part is, here's the funny part, and then we'll go to meditation. I remember this was like 20-something years ago, the first retreat in India. Okay, I think it was 2000, 2006, no, no, earlier than that, earlier than that. We're in a big old building or a shed or barn, whatever you want to call it, in India. And uh, if I remember correctly, at least 300 people. 
Okay, 300 very devotional students, and most of them were Indian, right? You know, grew up taught to be devotional. And then I remember a message I was sitting up front. I was in the first or second row, and I was listening to the spiritual teaching. And the message goes like this. By the way, I used to be atheist. Could you imagine? You're in a room of devotees saying, oh, by the way, I used to be atheist. You could hear a pin drop, as the cliche says. And before him, yeah, you can hear it. Right? Because, like, they're in disbelief. Like, did the spiritual teacher just said she he used to be atheist? That good thing he followed through. He goes, Yeah, I used to be atheist, but uh, religion was shoved down my down my throat as a kid. So I had to find God through experience, to study and experience. That's that. So whenever somebody says, I'm atheist, I go, okay. What do you want? And give you more attention? No. You're atheist, so be an atheist. Who cares? Let me teach you about meditation. I just ignore it. Because they're looking for what? They're looking for drama. Uh-uh. You ain't getting that from me because I love drama in the movie, not in my life. So you want drama? Go find somebody else. And they shut up. Did you? Okay, I'm interested in meditation. That's it. Finished. Because my teacher used to say, what's most important is spirituality. Spirituality unites. Religion has a tendency to see the differences, therefore it divides. It's good, it's important, but what's more important is spirituality. And that's why when people tell me, oh, I'm being brought up, my parents were Catholic, my parents were Hindu, I go, okay. And yet I go, of course I don't say that, I don't say it verbally, I go, and? So what? Who cares about them? It's you. And then at some point they go, oh. Because I've had people, yeah, you know, my parents meditate. They're part of the temple. They're trustees in this uh, organization. They're like the elders. I go, I go, oh, that's nice. In back of my go, who cares about them? It's you. What do you have out of it? At some point, uh, they notice I'm not interested in them name dropping. I go, you ready to meditate? Okay, let's do it. <laughs> they're like, I didn't get anything. Yep, you're not getting anything from me. That's why in class, when people like drama, I just kind of sit there going, <laughs> You done? You, you want attention? Oh, I hope you got it. From them, not from me. And they shut up. They go, okay, let's meditate, let's study. Okay, let's continue. After all, they don't pull that stunt anymore. We're here for one thing and one thing alone. To recognize who you really are by knowing that Everything else follows. You miss that part, everything else is decorations on the wall. Okay? So even fear is basically a fabrication of the soul. And unhealthy fear is what we want to get rid of. Okay? Shall we? To the Divine Supreme One, Divine Father, Mother, to all the spiritual elders, holy masters, saints, archangels, holy angels, and spiritual helpers, to my beloved teacher, Grandmaster Tsohok Sui Mahagu Jameli, to all the higher beings, to the Lord Christ, to the Lord Buddha, to all the high, higher spiritual teachers, holy masters, saints, and most of them, we probably have no clue what their names are, but thank you all for your continuous blessings, love, and I can speak to all of you, but to my teacher, thank you for your patience with me. In full faith, so be it. All right, you guys ready? Take your left hand, tap your heart center, take your right hand, tap your crown, then put your hand like this. Focus gently on your crown. Repeat after me. I am that. I am not the body. I am not the emotions. I am not the thoughts. The body, the emotions, and thoughts, the movements of the body, the feelings and the thoughts are just fabrications of the soul. I am the soul. I am the mover of the body. Feeler of the feelings, thinker of the thoughts. I am that. I am connected in one to my higher soul. I am connected in one to the divine spirit in me. I am a child of God, meaning we're all still growing and evolving. I am one with God. I am one with all. There is only oneness. Just be still and just let your attention and your awareness just gently float above your head. 
Just listen. You're not the body, you're not the emotion, you're not the thoughts, you are the soul. You are a spiritual being of divine intelligence, love, and power. That is your true nature. You are connected in one to your higher soul. Connected in one to the divine spirit, the divine spark within you. You are, and as all of us are, children of God. You are one with God, you are one with all. There is only oneness. Just be still. Remember your true nature. When you strip off the body, the emotions and thoughts, what's left is the real you. The real I within you. Be still. And just silently say, I am that. That am I. Be still. Maintain your stillness, maintain your state of awareness, and maintain your state of oneness. Just imagine all of us are inside the big bright sun looking out into the solar system. Be aware of your heart and your hands. Bless the earth with beautiful pink light. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Make me a channel of your peace. Wherever there's hatred anywhere in the world, let me sow unconditional love. Bless your family with unconditional love, your relatives, your friends, the people you work with. Let that unconditional love spread throughout the entire earth. Unconditional means you love with no expectations. Let it flow through you. Where there's injury, let me sow pardon and forgiveness. Where there's doubt, let me sow faith. Where there's despair, let me sow hope. Just recall people you know in your area, in the countries we mentioned earlier. People you know who are going through difficult times in their life, challenges with their health, their finances, their relationships, their mental health, even their spiritual development. Visualize that these challenges are being dealt with and turning around and making them better. Bless them with hope and with faith and a better tomorrow. So be it. So be it. And so it is. Bless them with hope and faith and a better life. So it is. Where there is darkness, let me sow light. Darkness is the absence of spiritual light, the ignorance of one's true nature, a being of light. Bless every person, every being with spiritual awakening, spiritual awareness, or what most people call enlightenment or illumination. So it is. And where there is sadness, let me saw a tremendous amount of joy. So be aware of your heart and your hands. Bless every person, every being with peace, with love, with a spirit of forgiveness, with hope and with faith, light and joy. So be it. So be it. Now be aware of your heart. Take a deep breath. Lift up that loving feeling up to your crown and exhale. And be still. And just be aware of your crown. You might feel a tingling, a pressure. Some of you might feel a stretching or a weight. That you're just, that's just your crown expanding. Being filled with so much golden light. Now allow that golden light to just slide down from your crown, through your hands, and flood your family with it. Beautiful golden light. 
to your relatives, your friends, the people you work with. Let that golden light spread throughout the city, the country. Let it spread throughout the entire earth. From the heart of God, through my soul, through my entire being, may every person, every being on earth be blessed with God's unconditional love and kindness. Let all be blessed with great joy and happiness, with understanding, harmony, and divine peace. So be it. May all be blessed without exception. So be it. May all be blessed. So be it. Just be still <clears throat> and let that golden light just keep flowing through us. So it is. Now, gently be where we are heart in your crown at the same time. Take a deep breath. Project golden light even brighter than before. Fill the entire earth. Let it permeate through the atmosphere. Filling the land, the sea, all the animals, all the people. Permeating the different worlds, the different frequencies, vibrations, dimensions. With God's unconditional love and kindness. From the center of the heart of God, through my soul, through my entire being. May every person, every being in the higher worlds, middle worlds, even the lower worlds, let all beings in every dimension, every direction, above and below, be blessed with God's unconditional love and kindness. Let all be blessed with inner peace, inner healing. Let all be blessed with understanding, harmony, goodwill, and especially the willingness to do good. Blessings be to all. So be it. Just radiate that loving golden energy everywhere. Let it permeate throughout every dimension, alleviating the pain, sorrow, and suffering of all beings. So be it. So be it. And so it is. Now gently lower your hands on your lap, palms up, keep your eyes closed, keep your tongue on the roof of your mouth. Now above your crown, just imagine a beautiful golden star. From your heart, send a stream of love up, up to the throat, to the center of your head, to your crown, past your crown, and into that golden star. <sighs> and stay there. That is your true nature. Pure energy and light. Remember it and affirm it. I am that. Be still. And listen. Om. to just drift deeper and deeper into that golden star. Om. You're not the body, not the emotion, not the thoughts. You are the soul. A spiritual being of pure energy and light. Be still and recognize who you are. Now, let go.
Just be still, we'll take you higher. Allow your entire being to simply be immersed in brilliant, brilliant light. Now. Maintain your stillness, maintain your state of oneness, maintain your awareness of who you really are, the soul, the spiritual self. Now below you, you see your physical body sitting, just observe it, just say, that's my body, it's a good body, it's doing its job. Just kind of also see a silhouette of your body, which are your emotions, and another silhouette of your body, which is, let's say, your mental body. These are just tools we're going to use. So just be still. And any type of fear that is not healthy manifests as gray clouds in the crown area, the head area, there in between your eyebrows, the Ajna Chakra, the throat, especially if you keep rethinking about it, Part of it in the center of your chest and the heart area, just a tiny bit. And as you look at it, part of it is like a gray cloud in your front and back solar plexus area, your front, uh, directly below your sternum and directly behind the mid back. And part of the fear is also in your kidneys and some of it in your basic chakra. So these just a gray cloud, just watch them. Now repeat after me. These fears, these thoughts, emotions are not the eye. Just say it. These thoughts, these emotions, these fears, these are not I. They are not me. And so it is. So just be still. The rest will be done for you. Just follow it in your mind, in your visualization, if you like, or just do nothing. The liquid divine energy is pouring down your crown. Your crown chakras are being cleansed. All negative thoughts and energies in your crown chakras are being disintegrated, extracted, expelled, and flushed into the near salt water or violet fire to you. Now, the liquid divine energy is pouring down to the air in between your eyebrows, disintegrating any type of fear thought forms, disintegrating, extracting, expelled the near salt water or violet fire to you. Now, the liquid divine energy is pouring down to your throat, your throat center, 
your jaws. All fear energies and repetitive thoughts are dissolved, disintegrated, extracted, and flushed into the nearest salt water to you. And violet fire, or violet fire. The liquid divine energy is pouring down, down to your chest, gently cleansing your heart. It's pouring down to your front and back soul plexus center. This is where a lot of it is stored. The liquid divine energy is penetrating deep into your front back soul plexus and flooding your entire astral body, dissolving, disintegrating, and flushing out any fear energies completely out of your system to the near salt water and or the violet fire. Now, just be still. The liquid divine energy is pouring down, down to your kidney area, dissolving any fear energies in your kidneys and adrenal glands, flushing it out into near salt water or violet fire. The liquid divine energy is going down to your base of your spine. Any type of fear of success, fear of moving forward, taking on opportunities are dissolved, disintegrated, extracted, expelled to the near salt water or violet fire now. So be it. Just be still. You're under a waterfall, this divine energy. Just let it keep flowing through you. Just keep observing. And listen. Om. Be still. Just be receptive. You don't have to do anything. Just let the energy flow through. Be cleansed. Just let it go. Just say, I'm letting go. I'm completely letting go of all these fear energies, these negative thoughts, negative emotions. These are not the I. Just with intention, flush it out to the nearest salt water, which you should have. If you forgot or nobody told you, just imagine a violet fire next to you. Just keep repeating, I am the soul. I am the true self. These thoughts, emotions are not the I. They have no power over me. These are not the I. Cut, disintegrate, release. Permanently. So be it. Just be still. All these negative thoughts, negative emotions, negative energies and frequency be dissolved, disintegrated, and flushed out to the near salt water or violet fire next to you now. So be it. You say, I'm letting go, completely letting go. Cut, disintegrate. And just be still. Now repeat after me. I completely, deeply, permanently accept, absorb, fully estimate all the divine healing energies. So be it. Again. I completely, deeply, permanently, gratefully accept, absorb, fully assimilate all the divine healing energies. One more. I completely, deeply, permanently, gratefully accept, absorb, fully assimilate all the divine healing energies spiritually, mentally, emotionally, etherically, physically, and on all levels. So be it, so be it. And so it is. Now be still. Keep your tongue on your palate. The stillness allows the divine energy to penetrate deeper into your different bodies. Now. Now, slowly, raise your hands in blessing, just like you did earlier. Visualize the earth in front of you. Be aware of your hands and your feet simultaneously. Visualize the earth in front of you. Fill the earth with golden light. May all be blessed with good health, happiness, prosperity, and with spirituality. So be it. May every person, every being be blessed. So be it. Bless your friends, your loved ones, 
Bless your job, your career. Bless the city you live in. Let the golden light just spread everywhere. Blessings be to all. So be it. Now be aware of your hands and your feet again and the base of your spine. Project golden light straight down into the earth and repeat after me. Let our beloved Mother Earth be blessed with divine light, divine love, and divine power. Let our beloved Mother Earth be healed, regenerated, and revitalized. Blessings be to Mother Earth. So be it, so be it, and so it is. Keep blessing Mother Earth now. May all be blessed, so be it. Okay, let's give thanks to the Divine Supreme God, Divine Father, Mother. Thank you. To all the spiritual elders, holy masters, saints, archangels, holy angels, and spiritual helpers, we thank you for immense blessings. To my beloved and respected teacher, Master Tokok Sui Mahagu thank you in full faith, and so be it. All right, there was a longer session than expected. Uh, if you're sensitive, you would have felt stuff being flushed out of your system. And the beauty of this is you can come back and redo this again and get the flushing again. It's just like you went under a waterfall, it got cleaned out, you go, ah, I need it again. You stand underneath again. Okay? Even though it's a recording after, it still works just as well. But if you think it does it, then you're right. Remember the window? You open up the window, what do you like or not? Sunlight comes in. But if you insist on closing the window, that's your problem. <laughs> not the sun's problem. When we do the meditation, the energy is there. The protocol move the energy to certain parts of your aura and your chakras to flush things out. So all you got to do is say, okay, I'm letting it out. That's that. Don't make it complicated. All right? Now, just a few announcements. Um, next week, we continue with Anchor the Light Meditation. However, uh, Monday is going to be the same. Wednesday and Friday, I have to let you know. Because I will be in Florida with Tony Robbins for uh, Unleash the Power Within. And uh, some of you have not signed up. It's fantastic. You know, I've been through it, I don't know, can't even count, 10 times maybe. And of course, at the end of it, I'll be guiding the group in Meditation Twin Hearts. And we usually have like, I know, 30, 40,000 people if you add up all the people on the screens. So I don't know how many these are. Every time I go there, Tony says, guess what? We have so many. I'm going, you know, and I thought my mind was blown once. It gets blown even more after. I'm surprised they're still ahead. <laughs> anyway. Okay, so that's next week. It starts next Thursday. You just go to Tony Robbins, TonyRobbins.com. And I think they're adjusting the time that whether you're in the U.S. or you're in the U.K., it turns out to be part of your waking time, which, which I love that. Because before, when we did the U.K. time, it's like, oh, man, it's like 10 hours ahead or how many? No, five, six hours ahead. And it was Australia. <laughs> that was nuts. The time was different. Anyway, so I'm sharing this with you because... Uh, the Wednesday and Friday ones, it depends on when I'm on stage and, you know, whatever my responsibilities are over there. But nevertheless, we'll update you on what time those meditations are going to be. All right? I think that's pretty much it. And um, make sure you do your meditations continuously. Cut all the negative cords and remember what we said before. You're not the body, not the emotion, not the thoughts. All of these are your fabrications. You're the soul. You're the designer. Design what you want. Design your life. <laughs> okay? And um, I hope you got rid of a lot of fear. You can keep redoing this until you, you know, it's like going to a car wash. Keep scrubbing it. <laughs> All right. Anyway, please leave your comments. Love to hear from you. Whatever platform you're at. I know we're in so many platforms. I don't know which, which one you're at. So thank you very much. Namaste, everyone. You all take care. Have a fantastic